Here on the milling machine, I really like using this uh, spin indexer. Uh, I've, I've shown this in a number of videos. It's basically just a little rotary index for holding round parts, and you can work on them here in the milling machine. It uses these five C collets, of which I have a set. One thing about it is it either takes up space here on my milling table, or I have to mount it and unmount it every time I like to use it. This is a true surface on its front, so I can use that as a reference surface to get it close to being square with uh, the world as far as my milling table goes. But I want there. I want to have a tool. I have an idea for a tool that I can use to quickly lock it in square and perpendicular to my T tracks here in my table to get it at least close and to be able to get my clamps down on it. I have a small machinist square, but it just does not fit in this very well with the T tracks and and the, this little gap right here. I have an idea for a little jig out of this piece of cold rolled steel, and I think we might be able to make something that works. Now the whole basis of the little jig I want to make should be pretty quick and easy. You see, this, this uh, piece of square stock here is essentially, I mean it's a cube, a rectangle, whatever you want to call it, a box. All six sides of this are essentially not perfect right now. None of them are machined. We have the four sides from the forge, and then we have two bandsaw cut sides. Now the thing about it is to make this jig, there's only going to be two surfaces that need to be perfectly machined, and we can do it in the same operation without having to take this out of the vise. So really, we just want this to be true flat. This will reference up against the spin index, and this will be true flat, and we'll machine a ledge in here to fit down into the T-slot. Now, given that this will never move from the vise and it'll be fully machined in this position, that means that this face and this face, given the parallel and perpendicular aspects of the mill bed, should be perfect to each other, or at least as perfect as we can reasonably do in this shop. That's the theory, and we're just going to start hogging away material and have at it. Okay, first operation, I want to shave a lot of this material down, so I'm going to use the homemade backwards spinning fly cutter here because I think it'll be a little bit faster, even though we can't take as deep of a cut each pass. I only have to take the one pass each way, and this is carbide, so I should be able to load it up decently, and I'm not super interested in surface finish, but this should provide a nice one. Okay, now that we've got roughly the thickness, which is just under half an inch uh, for the total thickness, all we need to do is take a swipe here on this front edge. This will be our front reference surface. So this is the first important surface. And all I'm going to do is just give it a quick pass uh, across the face with the end mill. I don't really need to remove any more material than necessary just to make it all square. And as per traditional in my country, a climb cut to finish, just as a spring pass. We want half an inch here in the middle raised up, so we're going to cut half an inch here and half an inch here. Inch and a half stock here. So this is a full width of this cutter. Uh, this is my, my currently biggest milling cutter. And so I'm going to probably take them pretty, pretty quick passes. We're only going to go about 200 thousandths. Okay, so here's our completed part. And the this surface finish right here, actually the, both these slots, the sides and the bottoms here, the surface finish is, is 
pretty pretty poor. Uh, the end mill is chipped, come to find out. So that's probably my biggest culprit right there. But we got there and the measurements are fine and it's square. Now remember, the biggest things are that these two faces are square to this face. Everything else isn't critical because these are gonna sit up against the slot. I did end up uh, surfacing this at one point and uh, eh, it's not important. But these are gonna sit up against the slot and then the index is going to reference off this face. So, I don't know, seems pretty square. Mill table, spindex, cut side, Okay, so using this little guy to get the spin index locked down with a couple of strap clamps. Um, that still took about 16 hands, felt like. So I'm hoping it didn't move too awfully terrible. Let's try to get centered here. Okay, so that's zero and I should be at top dead center. So let's just start moving it back and forth. Looks like about three going that way. And about two going that way. I'm gonna say six thousandths a run out. Let's try something actually. Okay, so I re-tightened my clamps here on the spindex. I loose I left one tight, I loosened the other, and I placed our newly made block up against it, against the two reference surfaces again. Uh, held that in place really tight, and then tightened the, the second clamp, so we'll see if that had an effect. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so that's two and a half. That's a pretty good effect so far. And less than one. Just barely. We'll call that one. So, <laughs> so that that's that's pretty cool. I'm pretty pleased with that. So about let's just call that four thousandths off. Uh, this is about three inches right here. That's not perfect, but that's a really cool close place. Now I can come in and start giving the spindex little love taps uh, real quick. Or if I have a quick, dirty, short job that's not requiring too much stick out to where this would this uh, four thousandths would be translated, you know, um, it makes it a pretty fast setup tool. So that's all this is. It was just kind of a, a thought experiment, scratching an itch in my brain, and, you know, I think it might help a little bit. You know, even just having this allows me to, it, I'm already more comfortable taking off my spin index uh, uh, and moving my vise around and things like that and having more room on the mirror. So, so this makes, it, makes me more comfortable being able to take take off the uh, spin index and replace it uh, without it being a giant kind of mental you know, pain in the ass I'm, I'm not looking forward to. Okay, so while I was reviewing the footage and editing the video of this, it occurred to me what would make it easier with that little hole 16 hands to set the thing up, and that is, yeah, you probably already thought of this, put a through hole for it, get a 3 8 by 16 socket head screw here, and make a little square nut. This is just out of some bar stock, drilled and tapped. Now this will fit into the T-slot in the mill bed and actually hold this down for me. Just like that. So now I can set that in place, but the index up to it, be good to go. Uh, kind of a fun project though, and mostly, like I said, just a little bit of a thought experiment, just playing around. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I've had a video out, and I'm sorry for that. I am moving shops. I will have some more pictures and video of my new shop, and all the work that I'm going to need to put into it kind of before I get back into cutting stuff and making stuff. But uh, so that'll be fun. That'll be some good some good content for you all uh, to kind of go through this this process and. I will have an effectively four times the size shop with its its own building, uh, you know, its own roll-up doors, its own everything. So, <laughs> pretty cool to me. That means I got to take 
all this and pack it up somehow and move it uh, not, not super far but kind of a distance and so so this is uh, I've got a couple of other projects I'm kind of in stasis with that uh, I'm not ready I don't have a good narrative to convey to you yet so they're kind of sitting uh, half half in the can as they were and you'll get to check those out but uh, until then I got all this stuff to pack up and and get moved. So thank you for sticking around and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching.